Hello YouTube, this is George with the newly renamed GNM Home Movies channel. Uh, I'm going to provide a short video with an update on our DIY solar panel electric system uh, and also answer some questions. So first up, um, I finished putting the uh, white gravel underneath the arrays and uh, the main purpose for this is to uh, reflect light back to the to the underside of the panels to get some additional uh, bifacial gain. And by golly, I do think it's working. Um, our system is rated at 5,500 watts, um, actually 5,520 to be exact. Uh, we got 12 panels, 460 watts each. Uh, but I've seen the system generate 6,000 watts. And so I have to um, assume that the extra 500 watts is coming from, from the rear of the panels, the bifacial panels. I also raked and seeded the, uh, the uh, backfill of the trench. Uh, so hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll have grass growing there and it'll look a little better. Not that our property is a golf course or anything, but it's uh, at least it won't be dirt. And now some questions or answers to questions. Uh, one of the viewers asked about um, these clips, and um, I have two types of clips. Uh, this is a mid clamp or mid uh, mid clip, it's called, um, and it holds two panels. And then on the top and the bottom, I have these um, end clamps, um, which uh, hold the, the top and the bottom. Uh, as you can see, they're loose um, because what I did is when I installed them, I backed out the screws a half a turn. So I installed the uh, the clips using these very nice two and a half inch uh, structural screws. Uh, in fact, the whole uh, both arrays are completely assembled using um, structural screws that, that are very nice. Um, but anyway, the, the the clamps I when I installed them, I backed them out a half of a turn. I backed them out a half of a turn so that the uh, uh, it wouldn't put so much stress on the panels uh, when, as the wood expands and contracts. Another viewer asked about why I didn't go with a, an, an adjustable tilt angle. Um, I chose to use a fixed tilt angle at 35 degrees uh, due south. I considered a, a, um, an adjustable tilt angle, uh, but several reasons why I didn't go with it. Um, first of all, it, it would have been more complex to, um, um, to to add that. Also, I, I had to get a building permit, and um, uh, my county was very strict on on the size and the the quantity of, of lumber to build this thing. And to try to design a tilt mount that met those requirements would have been really really hard. Um, and then the other reason is um, I'm already generating more power than I can use, uh, so. I, I don't really need adjustable tilt. Um, it's optimized for, for winter, uh, but in the summertime we're going to have so much sun that, that we won't know what to do with it. Now about these damaged panels. Um, Signature Solar gets a, a bad rap about their customer support or their technical support, um, but they were very fair with me and, and I have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, this video is not sponsored by anybody, but uh, I do want to give a shout out to Signature Solar. Um, so these two panels were damaged in shipping and um, um, they gave me a full refund. Actually, they gave me three options. One was to replace the panels. The other was to uh, give me a, a, a full refund. And the third option was a store credit with a 25% bonus, which is what I took. But my challenge now is uh, what to do with these panels. Um, I just hate putting things in the landfill. Uh, but they're they're pretty badly pretty badly cracked. Uh, you can't tell on the video, but um, they're very badly um, cracked. I think I took a hit from the side, which sent shatters all the way through it. Um, so I'm not don't don't know what to do. They're so big, I really don't have a place to store them. Um, so probably eventually I'll take the aluminum off and take the glass parts to the landfill. It's, uh, if you got any suggestions, please uh, send me a comment. So here we are in the engine room, and I want to provide a couple of updates on, on things down here. Uh, first of all, um, <clears throat> you probably can't see it, but I installed a fifth battery. Um, in my original video, I had 
um, ordered the battery, but now I got it installed and hooked up and it's, it's charging just fine. Um, also in the battery cabinet here, I installed these binding posts. Um, and I got, a, got them connected to the, to the um, bus bars. And the reason for this is so I can put a meter on there or attach wires for experiments. Uh, so I have access to the, uh, to the battery voltage. Um, I have a 5 amp automotive type fuse in the back of here, so uh, I won't short anything out or blow anything up. So I got the camera um, pointing at my computer screen here. Um, it's kind of funny because I spent my entire career in the IT business. Um, you would think I could do some sort of screen capture and, and, and highlight sections, but no, I'm just using a cell phone camera uh, on a screen. So um, right now, battery is charged to 99%, so it's fully charged. Um, the solar panels are only producing 769 watts because there's nowhere for the power to go because um, the battery is fully loaded and my load is only 707 watts. Um, and most of that are, are the lights down here in the basement. But I want to point something out here. So I want to point out here, see this yellow line is, is the uh, solar uh, power, right? Solar, um, what's it called? Uh, what's, yeah, so it, it's the, the wattage being generated by the solar panels. And you can see right here at, um, at 11.35 or 11.34, it was generating uh, 4,400 um, kilowatts, or no, 4,400 watts of, of power, not kilowatts, watts. Um, and then it dropped off. See right here, this drops off like a cliff. Um, and it goes down to, it went down to um, 1.4 K watts. And what that is, is um, the battery reaches, uh, when, the batter, when the inverter senses that the battery is at 95% capacity, it switches from bulk charge to flow charge. And, and it, it puts a whole lot less current into the battery. Um, but, and, and, and I don't have anywhere else to put the power. I, I can't, I'm, I'm making more than we can store or use. Um, so I, you know, this was, like I said, it happened at 11.30 a.m. And I could have probably get another two, three, four hours of, of, of power out of that if I had some place to put it. Uh, so that is, um, brings me to another subject, which is um, a dump load. Um, I plan to, uh, to make a dump load. Um, and what that will do is it will divert the excess power into something useful. So re regarding the dump load, um, the best thing which I wish I could do is when we reach this point here and I don't no longer need the power for the batteries or the house, I wish I could sell it to the utility. Um, but I can't do that because uh, my inexpensive inverter here is not certified in the USA for to export power. So um, uh, that's the main reason. And also, my local utility would require the system to be um, installed by a professional electrician and have a, an electrical permit, none of which I, you know, I did because I did it all myself. So I'm tr going to try something else. I tried a few experiments already, none of which worked. Um, my first attempt was um, this inverter has what are called dry, dry contact relays. Uh, well, just one, a dry contact relay. Um, but it's configured to run a generator when the battery goes dead, which is the opposite of what I want. Um, so I can't use that. More sophisticated inverters like um, Victron or uh, Midnight Solar or Solark, um, they have what's called an auxiliary control, uh, which would do what I want, but uh, they also cost much more money. This was only $1,300, again, from Signature Solar, no sponsor. Um, um, but other than being able to export power, it does everything I want. Uh, and one of the best things about it, it has a very high input voltage for, for the solar panels. Um, mine's usually around 250 to 300 volts, uh, which is good because the higher the voltage, the more efficient uh, it is. So the next thing I tried was, um, was um, since I can't export the power, I was going to try to use the, uh, the, uh, the line in for the inverter as a line out for some reason, or for, for, for that purpose. 
uh, but that did not work. Um, the, uh, the thing is designed to see the grid, and I, actually I think the firmware feature is disabled because it would not set, it would not stick. I could turn it on, but it wouldn't stick, so uh, uh, that didn't work. Uh, my latest attempt was this thing. Um, I bought this from Amazon for, I think it was 25 bucks or something like that. And uh, it's a voltage sensitive relay. Um, so I had it set for 54 volts, which is what I thought the voltage of the batteries would be um, when it switches from bulk charge to float charge. Uh, but no, um, the battery actually goes higher than that, it goes up to 56 volts uh, while charging. So I didn't want it to kicking it in the dump load while I'm still charging the battery. So, so that didn't work. Um, the next thing we're going to attempt is uh, I bought a, um, a uh, Raspberry Pi and I'm going to install an application called Home Assistant, which, um, which um, uh, might be able to do what I'm going to try to do here. Um, speaking of assistance, I forgot to mention, um, I bought I bought Solar Assistant to monitor the system. That's what's displayed here. And it's a little Raspberry Pi um, in this box right here. <clears throat> it hooks up to my, my network, my LAN, and then a, a cable goes over to the uh, USB port on the inverter. Um, and so, uh, and I bought that from bought that from Watts twenty four seven. Again, no uh, sponsor, but uh, they're the U.S. Um, distributor for 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 um, for solar assistant, and it's it's great. It has some wonderful charts and and um, uh, very useful information. Like here's the uh, last twelve months. This is an old Windows ten laptop, and it's slow as can be. Um, okay, so another, another viewer asked about uh, savings, uh, um, <coughs> efficiency or savings, uh, uh, the benefit of, of having a solar electric system. So let me talk about that next. Um, all right, so <coughs> since starting the system in January, so we had January, March, and February, um, uh, we generated and consumed 421 kilowatts of AC electrical power. Um, and, um, and that's not a full three months because uh, in January I was still experimenting with things so I had the system down for a while. And then also in March we took off a week for uh, a spring vacation and I shut the system down while we were away. Um, uh, but still 421 kilowatts if, uh, if we had to buy that, it would have cost us $60.45. So that's a, that's a savings there. Um, and that price doesn't include any of the taxes. That's just the, the, um, the distribution and the generating costs, uh, not the bullshit fees and taxes, which I hate. Um, but uh, another thing I want to point out is um, comparing last February, so February 2022, to February 2023, and I used February because, um, well, it's a month, it's a billing month from our, our utility, um, and it's the first full month I had the, the system running. Um, so last February, we uh, used 1,299 kilowatts of, uh, we bought, purchased 1,299 kilowatts at a cost of $147. This February, we only bought 713 kilowatts at a cost of $102. So it's a, it's a big difference, but um, it's 586 less kilowatt hours that we bought. Um, but during that same period, um, same time period, um, our solar, that's the well pump, the biggest load. Um, So we're now, this, this thing is drawing 3,376 watts of power, but it's all being produced by, by it's not taken out of the batteries, it's all being produced by the, by the panels. And then our panels jumped up to 3480, and um, 
and they are just kicked off. All right, so back to my uh, back to my chart. So, <clears throat> so we used 586 less. We purchased 586 less kilowatt hours this February than last February. Uh, we produced with the system 224. Um, kilowatt hours, but that still leaves a difference of 362 um, kilowatt hours that we did not have to buy, and I have to attribute that to, to three things. First of all, this winter has been very mild, um, uh, uh, and um, we hardly use electric heat at all. Um, we heat with wood mostly, but also we uh, we bought a um, our old refrigerator went up and we replaced it with a very efficient model so I, that has to be a savings and I replaced the dishwasher with one that has sm smaller capacity so I think those three things together mild winter uh, efficient um, uh, refrigerator and smaller dishwasher makes up the extra watts um, I'll do this comparison again when I get some more data and get another month of uh, of, uh, of history. So um, another question I got was um, a viewer asked why I didn't use an automatic transfer switch or an ATS. Um, I got this this rig here, this is my off-grid panel, and I got this big 50 amp cord and then I got two outlets, one that comes from the inverter for um, the output of the inverter and one that's connected to the grid. Uh, so right now it's connected to the inverter, so the inverter is driving everything that's on this, this panel. Um, I considered an ATS, but this was cheap and it was easy. Um, and I wrote instructions on so I have, my wife can switch it over if, if, if the system goes down and I'm not home. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to, to use. So uh, another question I got, is, a viewer asked me about... Um, um, having a licensed electrician, or if a licensed electrician was needed to uh, get the federal 30% um, uh, federal uh, rebate or a kickback, uh, and the answer is no. Um, the um, I forget what they call it, the energy efficiency, something or another. The, the new law that provides a 30% credit, 30% tax credit, which I took advantage of, and hopefully it checks in the mail. Uh, but no, I, I completely installed the system all myself. I had a building permit, but no electrical permit, uh, and I was able to get the uh, the credit. So, so that's good. However, um, uh, my state of Maryland in the USA uh, has a one thousand uh, dollar credit, which I was not able to get because that does require a licensed electrician and a, an electrical permit. So, I had to forfeit that one thousand um, dollars, but that's okay. So um, that's it. Um, that's all I got for right now. Uh, uh, things coming up. I'm going to upgrade to a heat pump water heater, which will definitely, uh, and I'm, it's going to be powered by solar, of course. Uh, so that will help reduce our electrical bill. Um, I'm going to work on a dump load. And um, also, I'm going to make a video. I have a, uh, uh, a small 12 volt system that I experimented with and I'm going to deinstall that clean it up and hopefully sell it on Craigslist so I'm going to make a video about that uh, so that's it for now um, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope I answered many people's questions and uh, thanks for watching